The PlayStation 3 is one of the greatest video game consoles ever made, and I'm here to tell you why today. It is 2024, and I am still sitting here, pl not now, but after or before this. I am still playing this one, I feel like, more ahead of other newer consoles that I have. I just bought this thing last year. I just bought a PlayStation 3 again, and this is the first time I've had one in maybe almost... 10 years. I haven't played it in a long time and then when I finally got it again I was like alright well I might I might just stare at it because it's beautiful but I also might I don't even know if I'm going to play it and I was completely wrong I play it all the time. So why is this thing so good almost 20 years after it initially released? It's down to maybe a couple things so let's begin before I just get off topic. It comes down to one specific thing only and that's well actually here hold on a sec. For one I need to talk about the design. The design of this thing is absolutely miraculous. I've made other videos talking about the PlayStation 3 a bit, but I mean, come on. If you don't talk about how great this thing looks every time you look in the mirror, it's just like, what are you doing with your life? The actual competitor to the PlayStation 3 at the time, the Xbox 360, was kind of lacking out... What? It was kind of lacking external features that the PS3 had. It was lacking an HDMI port from the initial release, and it also didn't have built-in Wi-Fi like this thing did. This is also the very early edition where it was, well, again, it looks miraculous, but this was not included in the later editions. I'm not even exactly entirely sure if they, or if anybody used these three features on the front of it, but it was kind of something that you didn't really expect to see. I believe it was something like a flash drive and an SD, which I think is still kind of usable now, and the other two are kind of irrelevant. It was just still kind of cool that they had these features. Not to mention, this had four USB ports on the front. I have no idea if it was possible to use all four at once, but the fact that it had four USB ports was kind of crazy. We are not talking about the PlayStation 3 if we are not talking about the games, because the games are the absolute number one reason why I am still playing this over a decade later. Or what, 20 years? That's absolutely almost way up. Shut up. This was kind of back when exclusive games for each console was very important. For example, the PlayStation 3 had incredible story-based exclusive games. We're talking games like Uncharted, The Last of Us. Those games alone are some of the best storytelling games of all time, and this was also back when a lot of games were in their prime. Uncharted, again, for example, was a game that was just beginning during the PS3 era, and really it just got stronger as it went on. The first one was kind of just getting a glimpse of what the game could possibly give to the public, and then the second one was one of the greatest games ever made. You want to talk about games that just get right to the action as soon as they begin, then play Uncharted 2. Games like Call of Duty were still very much in their prime. In fact, it was just beginning during the PlayStation 3 era with the release of Call of Duty 4. 2007 was really the year that video games were at its absolute highest mark, so the Xbox 360 also took advantage of it. But the fact that games like Call of Duty were completely taking off around this time were just giving people more reasons to play the PlayStation 3. In fact, if you don't mention that PlayStation Network was free at the time, then that is kind of silly to do on my part. This was very important because this was already a very expensive machine, almost double the price of the Xbox 360 at launch. Now, these multiplayer games, I don't even know, are functional at this point in time on the original PlayStation 3. Doesn't really matter about the multiplayer experience because these games I just mentioned still have an incredible story-based game. If you like story-based games, then the PlayStation 3 is a console you kind of want to get. Absolutely. This was probably the last generation of video games where you could walk into any game store and find unlimited amounts of games. It almost seemed like every single time you even looked up on a game store shelf, there was just another game you wanted to play during this generation. The fact that this was really the first generation as well where games started to look absolutely incredible. There were so many genres of games you could play. It wasn't just basically down to what we're seeing these days. If you don't like specific multiplayer games, and I don't know if you can't even really find anything to do. Really, it's just multiplayer taking over everything these days, and this is back where story-based games still got a lot of love. This was also the very first generation where games like Grand Theft Auto were pushing the limits of what games could possibly look like. Games were unbelievably impressive looking during the PlayStation 3 era. It was kind of insane. In fact, if you even go back and play some of the games from PlayStation 3, you will still think that way. I just went back and played a bunch of them recently, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing actually. It's almost kind of incredible that some of them looked as good as they did. The graphics is one thing, it's just the matter of how good the games are is just another 
thing to talk about. With this specific version of the PlayStation 3, you were also able to get backwards compatibility, which might honestly be the largest feature that you'd want to use. If you like games from the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 era, this is the console for you. PlayStation 2 alone is the greatest video game console probably to ever walk the planet, and the fact that you can play PlayStation 2 games on this, you can play incredible PlayStation 3 games, and then you just go back and play Simpsons Hit and Run or something. That was also the generation where you could just walk into any store and find a game you wanted to play with no questions asked. If you like to watch movies, then PlayStation 3 is also the console you want to get. Blu-ray disc at the time was a very popular feature, which was technically this was the cheapest version of a Blu-ray disc player when it first released. Blu-ray players were like a thousand dollars or something Canadian when they first released, which is kind of insane. It was more than a television, it seemed like, and then, you know, you get this thing and it's like a multimedia system, and I think that's why a lot of people bought them. You can pop in a Blu-ray player and then, again, go back and play Grand Theft Auto or something within five minutes. Don't even have to think about it. That was really when movies started to look incredible too. So around this generation is when movies and video games just started to look insanely good. They looked more interesting than a beaver den house party at the time. It didn't really make any sense how good games and movies looked at this time. The controller was also a very interesting thing that the PlayStation 3 unveiled to the public because, for one, it was wireless, which was huge because after you went from the PlayStation 2 days where you kind of had to sit a, a foot away from your damn television, your eyes would be bleeding. I'm kind of convinced if you were around in the prime days of the PlayStation 2 and older systems, if your eyes even work at this point, then you're lucky. They also tried to push the sensor type thing with the controller. For example, with games like Motor Storm, you could use it as a steering wheel. I never really thought that that became popular or something because around this time, like I was saying, that games like that, I don't really know if anyone even really needed to do that. Games like Warhawk and Lair, when you were a dragon just flying around, may have been cool to use. Let's be honest, how the hell is anyone using that for Call of Duty or something? If you like just really good many, many varieties of games that look incredible, being able to just find as many as possible, you can go to any store and find many games for the PlayStation 3 that are just insanely good and still are good to this day. Many things age terribly. They do. It's really impossible to think that that is a thing, but it is. I've seen it. I've gone back and played games that I've loved forever, and then I've gone back and played them, and then they suck. What happened? This, I don't know if there's really many from this generation that do. Although there is, I don't know if there's that many like other generations. There's so many different variety of games with the PlayStation 3 too. I mean, if you just go back and find games from maybe the first year that it was released, with games like Heavenly Sword and Devil May Cry, maybe even some Ratchet and Clank, game cycles seem to be very more very more. They seem to be more frequent at the time when games were releasing almost every two, three years. These games were already incredible, and then the fact that they were releasing not that long after the first release was, or the second, and then it's like, holy shit, this is amazing. This is kind of the problem with the newer generations. You have to wait forever to find a game that you want to play, and then God knows if it'll even be functional or if it's even good at launch. Some games from this generation are worse than inviting your dentist to poker night. It just doesn't really make sense why you do it and really I don't know why I'm even sitting here playing it right now. This was the launch model of the PlayStation 3. Again, even the slim and later editions of the PlayStation 3 are still amazing just for the simple fact of the games alone. But this specific one does have the backwards compatibility feature, which is huge in my opinion. You're like me and you grew up on the PlayStation 2 days and even some of the PlayStation 1 days as well, then you absolutely would want to go back and play some of those masterpiece worthy games. It's really crazy to think how many games are just incredible from this generation generation, all of them that were in there very much prime, all of the releases within certain periods of time, you'd be able to get so many games within two years, it was kind of insane. The game catalog you can build up from the PlayStation 3 era. The Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 era was probably the best for gaming purposes. Not only was the seventh generation, maybe even including the Nintendo Wii, was that the best generation in total? Those three consoles were incredible in their own way, and then the fact that they had the greatest games ever, it seemed like at the time. They looked so damn good, they played amazing, and they just became so popular. The exclusive games for the PlayStation 
PlayStation 3, which were most importantly the best ones in my opinion. If you can find Blu-ray disc movies on some type of eBay website or something like that, then absolutely this is worth it 100%. Because sometimes Netflix just doesn't have, actually not sometimes, all the time Netflix it seems like doesn't really have anything that you like to watch. The fact that you can just buy some movies that look incredible and just build up a movie kind of catalog as well is something that is very interesting, at least to me. I like movies. I like watching movies. I just don't know if I want to watch Netflix movies because I don't know what the hell this is. I'm five minutes into this movie and I haven't even seen anything yet. I'm kind of just willing to go stand in the corner and look at the loose cat hair flying around. Is the PlayStation 3 worth it in 2024? Well, it absolutely is. If you like many, many video games, if you like many genres of video games, if you like games that look incredible, then this is the console for you. If you like the console you have to look incredible as well, then the original PlayStation 3 is also for you. This is probably my favorite system that I currently own at the moment. It's not my favorite console of all time or anything like that, but in terms of what I would like to play, I'd probably play, I would, no, I, I probably would. I probably, I what? Shut up. I would play it over the Xbox 360. I would play it, over, well, I guess there's really no point to play the PlayStation 2 if you have this. There's a PS2 built into it. I would rather play this than the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X at the time. I'm saying this. If you want to relive some of the best games in history, which definitely took place in this generation 100%, this system alone will make you feel like gaming is at an all-time high, even though this is 20 years old almost. I felt some type of way that I've never felt before. This is crazy. Because some of the games I've never even experienced on PlayStation 3 that I went back and played just randomly, I enjoyed more than I've ever enjoyed a game in probably the last five years. So let's be honest here. It's 2024, and the PlayStation 3 is still probably one of the best video game consoles to ever release. Did I say everything? Have a good night, and... Keep the dream alive? Hope? I don't know, I was trying to say something that was just, you know, to wrap up the video and then I just said something very cliche and keep the dream alive or have a nice night, I should have just said, and then just left. All right.